Today on Mic Attempts, fixing an echo chainsaw. I got this top handle echo chainsaw for free because it's not working properly. It's a CS3000, which I can only assume stands for Chainsaw 3000. The previous owner bought a new limbing saw because this one wasn't running right and lacked power. Let's see if we can fix it. I'll start by removing the bar and chain to make it easier to manage. The bottom right corner of the air filter has deformed, which has allowed sawdust to bypass the filter. That's not good. There are two silver washers between this plate and the carburetor body. The fuel line going to the primer bulb is very stiff. Disconnecting the throttle linkage was a bit of a pain. I used a flathead screwdriver to push off the bottom fuel line. Maybe I should have emptied the tank first. With a little wiggling, the carburetor is free. That black piece is the intake gasket. It should lift off easily. This area should be clean, but there's a bunch of crap in here. I blew off the outside of the carb with the air compressor. Let's crack it open. It usually doesn't take much effort to separate the parts. This is a sign that there hasn't been fuel in the carb for a long time. It's pretty dirty. I'm guessing this is the reason for the poor performance. This cover is being stubborn too. Whoops. Let's see that again in slow-mo. This is the first time I've tore up a carb diaphragm. I ripped a hole through the center and even bent the metal disc. This little screw secures the pin, lever, spring, and needle, so take care not to lose any of these tiny parts. They all look good. The diaphragms are usually easily removed and can be reused if they aren't stiff or damaged. I'm going to be replacing the diaphragms anyway, so no need to be gentle now. Some gunk underneath as well. Carb cleaner in the eyeballs doesn't feel good, so I put on my safety glasses and started spraying. I lightly scrubbed everything with a toothbrush, and then sprayed out all of the passages. You should be able to pull the inlet screen out with a pick for better cleaning. However, this one wasn't cooperating and I can see the area behind is clean, so I'm not going to risk mangling it. The spark plug doesn't look too bad. I put a couple squirts of penetrating oil in the cylinder before pulling the cord, just to make sure there was some lubrication. It sounds good. Normally, I'd rest the plug on top of the cylinder to test for spark. I couldn't do that with this saw, so I used a screwdriver to ground the spark plug to the metal around the plug hole. It was stable enough to confirm spark. The air intake is mostly clogged, so I blasted it clean with the compressed air. The muffler cover is broken, so I'll be getting a new one of those.
The spark arrestor screen is partially clogged. A wire brush and some WD-40 shined it right up. The starter cover is held on by three screws. Make that four. There we go. Like everything else, it needs a good cleaning. I removed the guide plate to make it easier. It's looking much better now. I picked up a new muffler cover, a grommet to cover the exposed bolts on top, a fuel filter, carb diaphragms, and an air filter. Removing this bottom cover provides access to the oil strainer. Once clean, you can now see the oiler adjustment screw. Pull on the tube to remove the oil strainer. There's a fair amount of junk on there. It cleaned up easily with a toothbrush and carb spray. The rubber grommet slides on the oil tube, so trying to push it back into the hole can be difficult. The oil is pumped through the top slot. So I'm going to remove the guide plate to be sure everything is clean. It's good to go. The spark arrestor screen is ready to be reinstalled. This little section of fuel line needs to be replaced. It connects to the shorter front port on the primer bulb. Luckily, I had the correct size on hand. All right, time to put this car back together. The pump diaphragm only goes on one way, so you can't mess it up. There are locating pins to help get the pieces aligned. Since the gaskets are stuck to the carb and appear to be in good shape, I'm gonna reuse them. Drop the needle in the hole and stand the spring up in the divot. Slide the pin through the holes in the lever. There's a tiny dimple on the top of the lever, and the underside holds the spring in place. Hook the fork at the front of the lever on the top of the needle and trap the spring under the dimple. Juggling all these tiny parts can be frustrating, but it should end up looking like this. Hold everything in place with your thumb while tightening the screw to secure the pin. Here's a better look at the spring. The metal disc on the metering diaphragm needs to face the lever. There's a little air hole on this cover, but it doesn't matter which side it's on. Let's slap it back in the saw. The bottom left port connects to this fuel line, and the idle screw goes into this hole. I rubbed a thin film of grease on the back side of the intake gasket to help hold it in place. The throttle linkage goes through the top hole. I inserted the screws to hold the carb in place. Slide the choke shutter on the right screw. This made it easier to connect the fuel line. However, I quickly realized I couldn't connect the choke rod to the shutter without removing the right screw. Now's a good time to point out this little silver washer. It sits inside the circle of the choke shutter so the screw can be tightened down without restricting the movement of the shutter. After connecting the choke rod, just make sure everything is lined up so the shutter doesn't end up getting pinched. The new air filter is a tight fit.
When reinstalling the guide plate, line this tab up with the slot. The sprocket has some wear, but it doesn't need to be replaced yet. This chainsaw grease gun makes greasing the bar sprocket super easy. The chain tensioner is built into the bar, and I don't love it. It's looking much better with the new muffler cover. The grommet snaps right in. New fuel filter. Check. The sprocket guard doesn't seem to be sitting flush. Looks like it threw a chain and chewed up some plastic. Here's a better view. I taped it off, filled it with JB Weld, waited until it cured, filed it smooth, did the same on the other side, and it made no difference. Oh well, I tried. Let's see if it'll start. Sounds like it's gonna go. running great. But how does it cut? Not too shabby for a limbing saw. Feel free to rate this video, add your comments and questions below, and subscribe for more.